Why did Jesus allow the demons to enter the herd of pigs? The account of Jesus casting the legion of demons into a herd of pigs is found in Matthew 8, 28 through 34, Mark 5, 1 through 20, and Luke 8, 26 through 39. Matthew 8, 28 through 34, and when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled, and went their ways into the city, and told everything, and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. According to this story, demons inhabited human bodies. The demons made the men extremely violent, preventing anyone from passing by the tombs. The demons believed their judgment day had arrived as Jesus approaches the scene. They recognized Jesus as God and their eternal judge. Second, the demons recognized that a period of punishment, torment, lies ahead of them. Third, they appear to be aware of the general timing of their judgment as they declare Jesus to be ahead of schedule. In reality, Jesus did not come to judge them at the time, so these demons were not in danger of being punished prematurely. John 3:17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Nonetheless, they did not wait for Jesus to respond to their inquiry. Instead, they went straight to proposing an alternative to the judgment they expected to come. The demons proposed that they leave the bodies of men and enter the bodies of swine instead. They appear to have hoped that Jesus would accept this deal rather than cast them into the abyss. This is evident in Luke's account of the same event. Luke 8, 26-35 and they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep, and there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. They went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. The demons pleaded with Jesus to accept their offer, which he did. The demons leave the men and enter the herd of pigs after receiving permission from Jesus. When the demons entered the herd, they caused the herd to become crazed and they ran off a cliff into the Sea of Galilee. In an ironic twist, the demons' desire to avoid eternal punishment led to the demise of their earthly hosts. Because it served his purposes, Jesus had no reason not to accept their proposal. First, it resulted in the liberation of the men from the demons. Second, pigs were considered unclean animals under Jewish law, making them an ideal symbol and safe haven for unclean spirits, that is, demons. Third, accepting their proposal had no effect on the demons' eternal fate on Judgment Day. More importantly, Jesus was not committing a sin by accepting the demons' offer. In contrast, Jesus' encounter with Satan in the wilderness was quite different. Satan made specific demands of Christ with the intent of leading Jesus into disobedience if Jesus complied. As a result, Jesus rebuked Satan with Scripture and refused to comply with Satan's demands. 
This is the primary distinction between the two instances. The demon's request in Matthew 8 did not cause Jesus to sin, whereas Satan's demands on Jesus were designed to cause him to sin. Demons knew exactly who Jesus was, Son of God, and were aware of their ultimate doom. The account does not explain why the demons begged to be allowed to enter the swine. It's possible that they didn't want to leave the area where they had been successful in causing havoc among the people. Perhaps they were drawn to the filthy animals because they were filthy themselves. The demons may have made this strange request because it was their last chance to avoid confinement in the abyss, the place where evil spirits are doomed. Revelation 9, 1-6 and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Whatever their reasoning, it is clear from the account that demons possessed little power on their own and were powerless to act without Jesus' permission. As Christians, we can take comfort in knowing that the forces of the enemy of our souls are completely under God's control and can only act in ways He permits. The Bible does not explain Jesus' reasoning, but demonstrating His sovereign power over demons could be one of the reasons He cast them into the pigs. If the pig's owners were Jews, Jesus could have been chastising them for breaking Mosaic law, which forbids Jews from eating or keeping unclean animals like swine. Leviticus 11.7 And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. If the swineherds were Gentiles, Jesus may have used this miraculous event to demonstrate the malice of evil spirits under whose influence they lived, as well as his own power and authority over creation. In any case, the owners were so terrified of being in the presence of such spiritual power that they made no claim for restitution for the loss of their property and pleaded with Jesus to leave the area. The people were astounded, but unconvinced. They wanted no more of Jesus Christ. This demonstrates their heart's hardness and desire to remain in sin. The healed demoniac, on the other hand, displayed true faith and repentance of a changed heart and begged to follow Jesus. Perhaps the unmistakable difference between the saved and the unsaved served as a lesson for the disciples and everyone else who witnessed the event. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Mark 5, 17-20 The last two verses are quite surprising, and I believe they encourage us to think further. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. It doesn't read especially about the pigs, it reads especially about what had happened to the demon-possessed men. In other words, they emphasize deliverance, liberation, freedom, and healing. Behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Jesus demands a choice, love him and his salvation, or leave your prosperity and your wealth. Two amazing things have happened in this Gentile region, both unexpectedly and through the power of Jesus. The first incredible thing that occurred was that two demon-possessed men were now free, and their humanity was restored. They are no longer ruined, their humanity is restored to them. This prompts me to consider another instance in the Bible in which Satan attempted to bargain with God, namely the first two chapters of Job. 
Satan asks God for permission to afflict Job, and God grants him permission, which proves to be a test of Job's faith in God. Job would have to choose between loving God and trusting Him, or loving his possessions, family, and health more, and cursing God for taking them away. In other words, God used Satan to put Job to the test. That, it appears to me, is what is happening here. Jesus enters the Gentile world, He defeats the devil, He releases the prisoner, He portrays Himself as a great deliverer, capable of resurrecting life and hope. However, He also takes away a herd of pigs, the livelihood and wealth of some members of the community. The story appears to have multiple meanings. Jesus is the divine Son of God. Second, unclean spirits are defeated by Jesus. Jesus frees the captives and gives hope to the hopeless, including Gentiles.